Top. Well, of course, that's precisely what we're here to find out. I've just heard, incidentally, the second, that was quite wrong, Ryan Giggs will start on the bench today for Manchester United. We'll have confirmation of both teams for you in a moment or two. But there's a bit of action going on down there right now because there's a Legends match uh, taking place. Uh, former stars of both these great clubs are down there. I'm sure you'll remember many famous names and faces now as we join Clive Tilsley for a few moments. Everton 1, Manchester United nil is the scoreline in the game, but that really is neither here nor there. It's the memories that are rolling back as players as old as Billy Fawkes at 63 and Dave Hickson at 65 relive one or two great memories on this ground. Lou Macari that was with the uh, flashing header for Manchester United. But it was uh, Andy King here, the current manager of Mansfield Town, who scored the goal which separates the size at the present moment. Alex Stepney is the Manchester United goalkeeper. And Andy's had a mixed week. He uh, was hoping to come here next weekend with Mansfield for the playoffs, but they were beaten by Chesterfield in midweek, as at least uh, managed to notch on the afternoon. First goal we've had. This is Jesper Olsen, who played in that 85 final against Everton here. One or two on the field from that game, including number three here, Kevin Moran, who uh, didn't quite see the afternoon out. Jim Ryan to Brian Greenoff, Stevie Coppel. A little bit too long for Alan Gowling, and it's turned behind by Mick Bernard there, the Everton number two. Alex Stepney, who made that wonderful save from Eusebio here in the 68 European Cup final. 50 years of age now. That header was by David Jones, the current Stockport manager, playing for Everton. This is Jesper Olsen. And there's Jim Ryan, who's uh, still a part of the staff at Manchester United. One of Alex Ferguson's backroom boys. Plenty of smiles. George Woods, the Everton goalkeeper. It's a match that's been played at a fairly leisurely pace. There's a few competitors out there. Here's Andy King, the scorer of that. One and only goal, dispossessed by Jim Ryan. One back by David Johnson. Super striker for Everton and Liverpool, playing in defence today. But as the years roll by, then you do tend to work your way backwards down the field. John Bailey is the Everton left back there. That's Kevin Moran. And that's the end of the game, and Everton have won it. Well, it'll be an occasion which um, will be remembered long into the night, I dare say. That's Dave Hickson, what a, a player he was in the 50s for Everton and Liverpool. He had a couple of spells with Everton, 65 years of age, still on the staff at Goodison Park. Billy Fawkes behind him, the oldest man in the Manchester United team at 63 in a, a European Cup final winner here in 1968. Alan Whittle, who was a title winner for Everton in that Joe Royal side of 1970. Duncan McKenzie, always a great crowd pleaser in his brief spell with Everton. Brian Greenoff, who played in the finals here in 76 and 77. His brother Jimmy Clay, one of the goals against Liverpool in 1977. And Bob Latchford looking as young as ever. Great centre forward for Everton in the late 70s. Brian Kidd, I see, joining in on the reunion. There's Neville Southall coming on to shake hands with George Wood, one of his predecessors, and Andy King. Time has been a little kinder to some than others. This was the goal that won it. Made by Duncan McKenzie. And scored by Andy King, who always had an eye for goal from midfield in his... The younger days, and Alex couldn't quite get down there this time. He'll be reminding a few people of that as the day and evening wears on. Dave Hickson receives the Legends Match Trophy, which goes with this fine event, which hopefully will become a fixture on Cup Final Day. So, first blood today to Everton. It's not quite the real thing but it'll do for starters and the first lap of honour of the afternoon is led by Dave Hickson on behalf of the Everton Legends team.
Well, some memories there for us, and indeed for them, I suspect. Well, our team's arrived. Gary and Alan and Jimmy all set to give you the benefit of their um, wisdom about what might happen today <laughs> <laughs> and tell us uh, how wrong they were later. But um, meantime, let's, uh, let's meet the teams and we'll go through the Everton team uh, first. Compliments of their captain, Dave Watson. Are you ready? Neville Southall, age 36, position goalkeeper. Has been, never would be. Great professional Neville. He's the hardest trainer at the club. He's well liked on Mersey side. Everyone loves him to death. And um, he's been, you know, a great ambassador to Everton Football Club. The other side of him is he's, uh, he can, he winds everyone up. He's always up to something. And he tells people what he thinks straight to the face. As soon as he comes into training, he's having to go at someone for some reason or other. But um, that's just him. They just have to take it off Neville because if you don't, he'll give you the belt. Matt Jackson, 23 years of age and a defender. Matt's been in all the all the cup games this year since El Barrett's come. He's been left out of the, the league programme. But he's come in, he's done a great job all the time. And he scored a vital goal at Bristol City, which we won 1-0. And uh, that was the start, you know, the start of the cup run. We call him floppy because he's just he just doesn't got a care in the world really. He just flops around, you know. But uh, good lad. Gary Ablett, age 29, left back. Gary does a good job either as centre half or left back. A good left foot. He prefers to play centre half, but you know, as I say, he's been in at left back a lot of the time this season, and he's done a good job. He's known as the ninja around the club. I think it's because of his um, slant and eyes. But um, if anything needs to, and Gary, Gary's there to help out, and he, you know, he wouldn't say no to anyone. Dave Unsworth, 21, defender. He's been my legs this season, David. He's he's very quick. Um, he reads the game a lot better now and um, he's got an awful lot about him, great left foot and he, he's come on great and he's got a real good future. And the other side of him, it's just a pity that his dad's a Manchester United season ticket holder. Barry Horn, midfield, 32. Barry's had today a great season. He's, um, he's been in the middle of midfield for most of the season. Um, won't let you down, Welsh captain. He set a great example. Barry will tackle anything that moves. He's um, our PFA representative. Um, he's a bit bright upstairs, Barry. I think he's got a degree at university in that. Joe Parkson, 23, centre midfield. Joe, um, his first season here, and he, he settled in great, middle of midfield player. He's, he's big and strong, and you know he, he gets a tackle in. Um, and if it was an eating competition on Saturday, we'd enter Joe, and I'm sure we'd win it no problem. He's known to the lads as the pie man, for obvious reasons. Hello, my name is Anders Limpor. I'm 29 years old and I'm a winger. He took his time settling in, um, but not when he's hit form, which he has done recently, he, he's a match winner. His feet are so quick, um, he beats defenders and he makes a de defender look a fool. I know in training he, he's done it to me a million times and you know what he's going to do, but you just can't do nothing about it. He's a quiet lad, um, a Swedish international. He just comes in, gets on with his job and um, goes back home. Andy Hinchcliffe, age 26, midfield. Andy started off as a, uh, a left full-back and he's been pushed into the left-hand side of midfield. And um, it, it's the reason for us scoring a lot of goals is by the quality of the ball he's put in the box for the likes of Big Duncan and Paul Rideout. Great left foot and um, I know goalkeepers find it a nightmare trying to defend against the corners he takes. Um, he's known to the lads as Bruce Forsyth. Name, Paul Rideout. Age 30, just centre forward. Paul, he's had his best goal scoring season this season. I think he's around 15, 16 goals. Um, he's, he's done a great job for us. I mean, especially when um, Duncan's been out the side and Paul sort of carried the front line. He's done brilliant, good target man. He's got a good touch. Um, on, on the nickname side, um, we could be here all night. So I think I better give that one a miss. Graham Stewart, 24. I'm a striker. Cockney Ken, he's known as to the lads. He's done well when he's come in the side game. Um, he's a lad who scores you know, goals in big games. He has done at Wimbledon last year. And uh, he's popped up with one or two this year. But um, I think the boss is to see the best from you. Dave Watson, 30-ish and centre-half. Dave Watson, um, great player, great touch. 
lovely skill on the ball. No nicknames at all. Believe that, you'll believe anything. Ferguson nods down. Brilliant Merton! Ferguson's head and Dave Watson puts Everton in front. Good lad, thanks very much Dave for steering us through that. Now here's confirmation of the 11 and uh, we can uh, put that into some sort of form for you in a second or so. But um, Alan Hansen, first of all, are you surprised that they've uh, gone with the team that won the semi-final convincingly or would you have expected Ferguson to start? Well, I think they played so well in the semi-final that he's no qualms about starting with that lineup. Ferguson for me has probably been the best player since Joe Royal became manager, but he's been out for five weeks, so, and this is a taxing pitch. If he just started with them, he might have only lasted 20, 25 minutes. If Everton get in trouble, they can always pitch him on in the last 20 minutes and he can show his quality then. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the strengths lying for Everton today, Gary? Um... I think in, in their aggression and their competitiveness in midfield. I think that's where they beat Spurs. Um, they close people down very quickly, right over the field, and um, they want to win. They've got a terrific spirit, and that's what, if anything, will see them through today. Yeah. I said earlier, uh, Jimmy, that um, talking to Joe Royal yesterday, he's got great admiration for Limpa, who had an outstanding match in the semi-final. I wonder, though, can he reproduce that kind of form here against these excellent fullbacks of, of Manchester United today? Well, it's a, it's a wonderful pitch on which to do it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a perfect surface, and if you have got that kind of running skill, <clears throat> not a bad place to show the world that you can do it. Yeah. Uh, but I think what Everton have got is morale. You know, um, they've, they've just saved themselves from going out of the Premiership. You know, they, who cares? We're in the final. We might even win it. I think whereas United have got the fear uh, of losing it, and I think that's the greatest thing in Everton's favour. The manager actually. takes all that, at least yeah. for me. He came at a time when Everton were on the road to nowhere. He's changed one or two of the little things, but as Gary said, They've got that competitive edge, they've got a little bit of team spirit, they're playing for each other, and the quality that I've got on the side is shining through. Little things have become big things. Hinchcliffe taking the corners, for example. Why was he never taking them before Joe Royal arrived? No, it's a it's a best form of attack, the Hinchcliffe corner kicks. He's told Hinchcliffe, go and take everyone. Yeah. And it's he, a, he, fantastic. It's a positive bench, Gary, isn't it? With um, Ferguson and, and Amakachi there, no defender. It's very positive, but He's got players that are versatile. Hinchcliffe can certainly go back and play, play defensively. Ablett could switch to centre-half, so I don't think he, it's a concern. If, if a defender went off, he could compromise. Um, but what they have got is quality on the bench as well, and, and I would think Ferguson will certainly um, have a part to play, unless Everton go two or three goals up, of course, which is unlikely. Well, you've tipped them, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've tipped Man United, actually. Oh, you've tipped Man United, that's I've right. I've been forced to yeah. tip Man United. Yeah. The strikers are under pressure on both sides. They've got Giggs, you know, and Ferguson sitting there waiting to come on if you have a bad well, game. The only, so. the only thing that will go against the Everton style of play is the pitch. You know, I think it's a blessing this guy is not too hot for them because it's very difficult to keep going like that for 90 minutes. And the last 20, 25 minutes of a cup final, usually players get tired. And that's when Manchester United might right. come back into it. Well, thanks for the moment. Let's just underline the United uh, team for you now. And Lee Sharp is steering us through this one. My name is Peter Schmeichel. I'm 31 years of age and I'm a goalkeeper. The sheer size of him, I think he, he's, he's got such a presence in the goal. Um, one on ones, he's unbelievable, comes out and spreads himself all fours. Crosses, he's absolutely huge. He's got such a strong presence, it makes the back four just, just feel so comfortable with him there. As a fella, he's, uh, he's not too bad off the pitch, but he's a bit of a, a, bit of a bad loser on it. Um, he's just got that, that winning edge, you know, he just loves to win. Gary Neville, age 20, full back. He's done really well at the moment. I mean, he's a dead strong tackler. Dead good in the air, you know. He's come on leaps and bounds, slotted in at right back. Where he usually plays centre half. Uh, he's slotted in at right back and done really well. He hardly ever speaks. He always looks serious. He's from Berry, so he sort of calls himself Gurry instead of Gary, you know. So uh, he takes a bit of stick for that. My name is Dennis Arwin. I'm 29 years old and I play left back. When we do the shooting, he hits his shots like he hits his free kicks. He sort of gets that up and over whip that he can get on it. He's one of the best finishers at the club, I think. After the penalty the other week, it was cutting in a lot of the papers that they were calling him the Iceman. Never buckles under the pressure or anything, always keeps his cool. Uh, quiet fella, Dennis, but uh, always comes up with a, 
I wish to remark now and again, you know. So, you got to be careful of Dennis. Uh, Steve Bruce, central defender, age unfortunately 34. Other than Bruce, you're looking like one of my bulldogs, I think. Uh, I think the only, the only other nickname he's got is, uh, I think he's Dolly, uh, Dolly and Daisy, like the manager calls him. Uh, him and Pally. I think I think he must be Dolly because I'm sure he I'm sure he calls Pally Daisy. He thinks he should play up front actually. That's where he, he thinks his natural position is. So he's played all these years and he's just realised he should be a centre forward, not a centre half. <laughs> Gary Palliser, 29, centre half. I think he must be one of the only centre halves in the country that's only got two bookings. He got booked in the two semi-final games and he's not been booked for the rest of the season. He tells everybody it's his reading of the game ability and his speed and oh, all these sort of things. And we just say that uh, he's a bit softened up by the tackling of anybody. <laughs> We're all sat around eating the meal before the West Ham game, the night before the West Ham game, and Stars in Your Eyes came on. And uh, this bloke came on with a big suit on, with a big quiff on his head like that, as Eddie Cochran. <laughs> so it's actually, because he's growing his hair, it's actually stuck. So we just call him Eddie now. <laughs> Um, my name is Roy Keane, I play midfield and I'm uh, 23. Sets the standard from the first minute when he first goes into a tackle. I'd hate to play against him week in, week out. He really is a good player. Um, but off the pitch, he's, he's, he's actually told me to be nice to him. I told him a few of the names I could call him, and then he says, oh no, please be nice. Nobody's ever nice. So uh, I won't call him schizo or psycho like we usually do. So I'll just uh, I'll stick by saying he's, he's top man. Hi, my name's Paul Wintz, 27 years of age, plays centre midfield for Manchester United Football Club. Thank you. Paul Wintz, he likes to be known as the governor, but I've told him I'm not going to call him that. I think he's the only one in the squad that calls himself it. We call him the Frankie, because the newspaper report said he was going to be the new Frank Rijkaard. He's always saying he's the best midfielder in Europe and all this, so uh, he takes a bit of stick. We just told him he's got to get the little dreadlocks now to go with it. Between him and Keeney, I think it's probably the best midfield in Europe. I mean, strength-wise and uh, just sheer guts and determination, I think they stand a chance of running any midfield. Brian McClure, 31 years of age, midfield. Chuck is another one you've got to be careful of. He comes out with a few comments that can cut you down to size. He's our dictionary in the, in the dressing room. If any, anybody's ever got a problem uh, with different words or different sayings or anything like that, it's uh, straight to Brian McClure. He's the one. Straight, he's, a, he's the Telegraph reader. Guardian and Telegraph, we all read the Sun and the Mirror, he's the Telegraph and all posh papers. Mark Hughes, just 31, uh, my position's centre forward. Mark Hughes, the triple ledge, he's unbelievable sparky, I mean, he just seems to cross that line and, you know, put, pull the shirt on, cross the line and just, that, that's him, he's just snapped over. Uh, he turns into a bit of a Tasmanian devil. He scored some absolutely spectacular goals. He scores them in all the big occasions. You know, and the amount of goals he scored in semi-finals and finals has been uh, phenomenal. How big are his thighs? Well, if you put your two legs together and measure round, it's probably another couple of inches on top of that. <laughs> Ryan Giggs, 21, forward. Obviously got absolutely fantastic talent. When I played fullback, I didn't come across it many tricky wingers. He must be a nightmare for fullbacks to be playing against. You never know which way he's going to go. He's, just, he's like rubber when he's on the ball. You know, he gets so low when he drops his shoulder and uh, there's a few of us that always do extra training. He's always prepared to work on his game and I think it shows on the pitch on a Saturday. He knocks around with sort of his old school pals, so uh, you don't see a lot of him. Um, see more of him in the paper, actually, than we do off, off the field. Hi, I'm Lee Sharp, I'm 23 and I play left wing. I prefer to play wide left. Um, you know, com coming in to midfield to help defend or maybe if I'm not getting the ball, I'll come into midfield and, and sort of dig in. I love to celebrate a guy. I mean, I just think you need to be enjoying football. You know, you need to enjoy it to play well. That's why I do the celebrations, and uh, you never know when you're going to score it again. So I've had too many injuries and been out for too long to, to sort of think, well, I'm not going to celebrate this, I'll celebrate next time and all that. I'll just, I'll just make the most of it when it happens. Which has got Sharp in here, and Sharp has scored. The cup holders are in front. Uh, thanks to Lee, very well done indeed. We've heard since we compiled that, of course, um, that Giggs will be on the bench and Nicky Butt uh, will start the match. He'll be in the 11. It's his first full season, of course. He'd only had a couple of uh, United appearances before this term. Uh, 20 years of age. I think he's played in the Youth Cup final here, but uh, this will be a big day for him. 
he starts the match for Manchester United and we'll just underline that team for you in a second or two but uh, there's going to be quite a battle in midfield here today and uh, we'll get some more expert opinion on that in just a second or so but uh, just to confirm Nicky Butt starts Giggs who's uh, been injured starts on the bench so let's uh, give you the 11 for United it's like this now again I'll come to you Alan Hansen first for your thoughts on that 11 well he hasn't played Giggs obviously the same reason that Joe Royal hasn't played Ferguson Giggs hasn't played for five weeks he can always throw him on and put him in the action I think they're very very strong down the middle Schmeichel Bruce Pallister bought in St Hughes um, it's difficult to see if that team played really well that Everton could beat them they've got quality right through at the side the two centre backs are a major influence in the side and Hughes up front for me you know he always produces the goods when when it gets tight. It makes you wonder why I left him out last week. Well, Just a bizarre well. decision, and um, it was a, clearly a big mistake. They certainly played better when he when he came on. In, well, they did. Time you're talking about, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, the, and it cost him the championship in many, or it could have done. I mean, it's um, yeah. hypothetical, but he's such a great player on the big occasion. Um, he's not been in the best of form in recent weeks, which is probably the reason Ferguson left him out. But um, he'd want him in a game like today because. Um, He's always rises to the occasion. I think the goal in the semi-final last season you know, sums it up. You know, if it's tight and they're in trouble, he's always going to give you something extra. What do you think about time. this, Jimmy? About you know the fact that they just missed out on the championship and now they've got to come and the, the phrases lift themselves again. Do you think yeah. that they that's a problem for them, or are they so professional that it doesn't bother them and they get on with it? Well, I think the key there is the manager. I think the one thing that they have as a club is a passion for winning, and I think if you're a player under Alex Ferguson. Uh, you don't slack uh, and I wouldn't like to have had half a bad first half and have Alex come into the dressing room at half time and, and judge me <laughs> I tell you that he is he is a winner he's proved yeah, it throughout yeah. his career uh, and he'll be picking them up from last week's disappointment and it's not just a matter of passion there's an awful amount of talent in that side but they're very strong defensively at the back particularly in the air and that's where Tottenham were demolished in a way in the semi-final. And I can't see them doing that to United today because of that great strength. We talk about the gigs and the inces and all the Hugheses, you know. And my favourite, McClare, which yeah. long term, yeah. haven't, yeah. No, no haven't yeah. moved think, away from yeah. that. I think I'd the like British public have spotted yes, that yeah. one. You would. Yes. So yeah. just I'm yes. declaring my hand before in case he yes. gets taken off after 30 minutes. <laughs> you don't have to lift yourself. But it is that time. passion yeah. that is going to be there from Manchester United. This is the biggest game that these players will ever play in. I'll tell you this much now. And on one off occasion, nothing beats this game. Let's have a little forecast from you, starting with Gary. What, what do you think? Hunch, hunch time. Well, uh, I'm going to go for United. Uh, as a former Everton man, I've, I've tipped them to lose every round, and I've had letters from Everton fans saying, whatever you do, don't pick Everton. Imploring so you. I'll yeah. go for yeah. United. <laughs> It's an easy way out, that, isn't it? Uh, well, it is, yeah. yeah. I'll take it. I'll the take it. It's the intelligent <laughs> way out. I think yeah. if, if, if United play well, they'll win. If Everton play the way they played in the semi finals against Tottenham, they'll win. But if you put me on my neck in the line, I'll go for Manchester United. Yeah. Just. But everybody expecting a tight one, Jim. We might not see four goals like last year. I think your verdict earlier on this afternoon was perfect. Go you on. Know, a very cl close game with, with the help of uh, you outside 1 0 to Manchester United. But. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Did I say that? Well, I know, no, it wasn't you. It was David Pleat. <laughs> it was David Pleat said it, but you sort of agree oh, with him, didn't you? Are we easily confused? You said, no, no, no. David Pleat said 1-0 United in a close game. Close game, I agree Exactly. With. Yeah, game. well, it's nice when David Pleat and you agree. I mean, what can the rest of us do to argue about that? And who are you going for then? <laughs> who are you yeah. going for United? I've already, I think a Lancashire team will win the cup. Thanks a lot, Jim. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, pay a fortune for these kind of opinions. We hope we get a bit more sense at half time, but there we are. Right, we're all set for this Littlewood Sponsors FA Cup final for 1995, and it's time to join our commentary team now of Trevor Brooking and first Barry Davis. Wembley Stadium dressed overall for what is still the biggest date in its sporting calendar. Blue to our right, red to our left, and in between the most luscious looking pitch you could wish. It's a far cry from Newbury Lane, Oldbury, in the borough of Sandwell, but that's where this 114th 
FA Cup began on Friday, August the 26th. A preliminary round which included a contradiction. Esch winning, losing 7-0 to Harrogate. And from there, it's meandered through three seasons of the year as 550 teams have come down to the last two. But then that's the beauty of the FA Cup. It embraces teams from so many levels. And among our worldwide audience, and maybe indeed in the crowd, are many with an FA Cup tale to tell. On the journey which has led on to the last of 63 Uniteds who were entered now defending the cup they won last year against the only Everton to take part. They're still coming down Webley Way. Sadly, the coaches for the teams no longer do that. One or two latecomers. It's a pleasant afternoon for football. Not too warm. Just the threat of rain earlier, but that seems to have uh, dissipated. It is a very special day, not only in the sporting calendar of Wembley, but in the calendar of the nation. Most of the Manchester United supporters have come dressed in red, although I did talk to someone this morning who was wearing blue, and then to my surprise I found he was a Manchester United supporter. Well, a devil off the pitch. And there'll be one of two controlling the devilment on it. Everton, previous record, 4-7-11. 11 finals, only four of them won. Not a perfume that the supporters from Goodison Park have fully enjoyed. Manchester United, this is their record 13th appearance. They're looking for what would be a record ninth win. Everton have played in four finals before Manchester United won it for the first time, but only in one of those four were Everton successful. The hairstyles always interesting. So are the rosettes. You may have seen a few. Two who can't play. Paul Parker on the right for Manchester United, though he is now fit, and one wishes him well for next season to have a battle for his place back at club and international level. And Earl Barrett, who came to Everton too late in the day to play in the final. Plenty of pictures of Cantona. And now, down in front of the Royal Box, Her Majesty's Royal Marines assembled. And we await the singing of the words of H.F. Light, written early in the 19th century, which have been an inspiration to many, and which have been for so long a part of the tradition of Cup Final Day. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and join in with the words on page five of your program and our traditional Wembley hymn, Abides With Me.